um, the right slide. It says practical skills for managing stress. Great, fantastic, thank you. Okay. And, um, okay. Well, I want to welcome everyone here today. I'm so excited to be able to speak with Dr. Rue about how she's integrating um, we are resilient into pediatric practices. And um, just a little bit of information about myself. I'm the CEO of Dovetail Learning. And early in my career, I was the project director for the first Bright Futures, which I'm sure anybody who is related to pediatrics is aware of. And I see this work as a continuation of Bright Futures. Bright Futures at that time was understanding how we have to bring different things into the doctor-patient relationship with the family. And now when we're thinking about um, stress and trauma and all those other things, we understand the importance of building resilience. And that's why we created We Are Resilient. And Dr. Miriam Rue is the medical director of UBCP Bancroft Pediatrics in San Leandro, California, where she's been practicing for more than 20 years. Her practice began implementing the Pearl screening tools of pilot in the fall of 2019. She's affiliated with multiple hospitals in the area, including UCSF Health Medical Center and Eden Medical Center. And she received her medical degree from Oregon Health and Science University. She's also had the privilege to work in medical clinics in Nepal, Korea, and Panama during medical school. And during her preventive medicine residency, she also worked in several public health departments in the Bay Area. And as the part of the reason I love working with Miriam, because I also have spent a lot of different parts of my career overseas working in different environments. And um, I think that gives us both a deeper understanding of why resilience is so important. So our session today will run about 30 to 35 minutes and we'll have time for questions at the end. Or if you have questions in the middle, this is a conversation, feel free to you know raise your hand or put something in the chat and we'll try to answer things as we go through it. So um, just a little bit. Um, first, I wanna just begin by appreciating you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for handling all the challenges that come up, for taking care of the people around you. Thank you for coming to this webinar today and for caring. We know that there's been so much stress on so many people and we just wanna thank you for doing that. That's totally in line with our mission, which is strengthening resilience in adults and children at Dovetail Learning. And our vision is to create a world of kind, connected human beings and we are resilient is part of that. And just so you know, all of our materials are open educational resources that you can download and use for free, adapt for your own community, share. All we ask is that you give attribution and you collaborate and share back as you can. We feel like open education resources are what can make resilience skills accessible for everyone. So today we'll be talking more about this We Are Resilient practical skills, but with that, I wanna um, come out of the slides so I can um, we can talk about some bigger bigger things. So welcome, Marion. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Honor to be here, and I'm excited to have this conversation. Yeah. So let's start off with the easy ones. Like, how did you learn about dovetail learning? And we are resilient. So um, as uh, you mentioned, I'm in, in a bunch of different collaboratives, and one of them was the ASHU Collaborative, which was um, something that was um, came from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, and it was really a collaborative of all a, a bunch of different pediatric practices in the area to help us learn how to bring more social emotional learning into our offices, talk more about um, social determinants of health. Um, and as part of that, you guys um, were guest lecturers and gave a fantastic presentation on uh, the We Are Resilient model. Um, and, you know, even in that first 30 minutes, I mean, even actually in this first slide, I was just like, yeah, that's what I want to do. I mean, I was just totally hooked. Um, and so, um, you know, as you know, then I joined um, one of your personal resilience circles um, and had um, a great, you know, six, eight weeks, um, you know, with different physicians um, in the area, just to kind of go over the model and um, talk about um, all the different things. And I thought that was fantastic. Um, I love that so much that I wanted to bring it to my staff. Um, and so then, you know, when we invited you to come and give us a uh, I think it was four sessions um, during our, you know, weekly during one of our weekly huddle times, um, and it was great. It was like transform transformational for our staff as well, 
just to kind of have that time to really talk to each other as human beings um, right. and go over things. Yeah. And, that, and then I decided to become one of the certified coaches. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for you, it's for us, it's really wonderful working with you because you give us a window into how this actually is operating in pediatric practices. We have some sense of what can happen, but you know, it's really been fun to see how you've taken it. So I think on, another question I have to ask is um, what, what you said you were hooked, but what would, what interest you particularly about the approach and what problem were you trying to solve that you felt this was a good solve for? Um, I think what, you know, really, um, hooked me with the approach was that, you know, it's really kind of um, trauma informed, you know, very non judgmental, right? Um, you know, one of the things we talked about, you know, and one thing that I really liked was that we talked about protective patterns um, and how, you know, those patterns are actually resilience, right? Um, you know, yes. we use those things to, um, uh, you know, to, when we kind of react to the world, right? And those things protect okay. us. And in yes. some ways those things serve us, right? Yeah. And I really liked kind of that approach and thought work because, um, you know, so much, so many of us kind of beat ourselves up when yes. we do things to kind of protect ourselves. And so I love that it was, you know, non-judgmental. That was a huge thing for me. Yeah. Um, I also love that it, you know, we kind of talked kind of as a, as a group, right. And we all really learned from each other. It wasn't you coming in saying like, you need to do these things to be more resilient. Yeah. Right. It was just like, Hey, let's learn from each other. What kind of things have you learned from your own life? Yeah. Right. Um, to help, to help. And, you know, and when we talked about, um, kind of the, um, our personal resilience and things that we can do like breathing mindfully. And, you know, again, we talked about how those things served us and sometimes like how, you know, maybe that wasn't appropriate at a certain time. So I like also that we, there was a lot of kind of questioning of all the things um, and we had a really great discussion together. Um, and then of course, I love it that it's an open educational resource. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's all good to hear because they're all things that we built really a thoughtfully into the program and to the approach. And that's one thing. It's not a program. It's really an approach and it's right. flexible and it's a structure of a way of thinking about things. And that's why we know that we all have a lot to learn from each other. Once we have the structure in mind, it's like, how does that actually work? And that works differently for all of us. So um, that's why we know that everybody has a voice in this whole discussion. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I really love that part of it. That everyone <laughs> has a voice, right? Uh, how would you describe the approach for those who are unfamiliar with it? They're just coming in fresh, what is the We Are Resilient approach? So, you know, we, the, we Are Resilient approach really starts from the fact that we are already resilient. Um, I think that's one of the first things that you guys write, right? Um, and that, you know, to really kind of notice the ways that we are resilient and what we've used so far, you know, I, I really appreciated kind of looking at all our cultural patterns and our cultural resilience. And just the idea that it's the lens that we see the world, right? And, and we're not boxed by it, but it's just kind of opening things up for us. And, you know, that's how we notice things, right? Um, and then to look at kind of our reactive resilience or, you know, the ways our protective patterns, right? And again, to look at how they did serve us, you know, and how sometimes they do serve us now and how they don't serve us. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we look at the connecting, collaborating um, skills and, um, you know, how we can, you know, bolster those up because we all are, already have those as well. Um, and just to really bolster, bolster that up along with our personal resilience. That's great. That's great. Um, how do you think it's helped in your practice? Um, it's been great. Like I said, you know, we totally appreciate when you came in and, you know, had a session with us. Um, we had the entire staff get together and it was one hour a week for four weeks um, and talked over the different things. And just to be able to, um, you know, share this with the staff and then have the staff kind of practice it amongst themselves, you know, it made us all kind of closer together and we could really work together a lot better. So that was great. Um, and the way that we now approach our patients um, is definitely much more, you know, less reactive because often we're like, oh my goodness, right? But instead of sure, yeah. a little pause, right? And respond. Um, and so we're also kind of modeling, you know, all the stuff for our patients as well. Yeah. So the We Are Resilient approach, as you know, has the practice model coach method, right? So that means we all have to practice it ourselves. 
so that we can model it, so that we can coach. And how do you think, um, how do you think you're practicing? What, give us some examples of practice for yourself, what you're doing. Um, you know, all the time. So, you know, one of the, the thing that I think is, you know, through all the different types of resilience, right, um, is kind of noticing myself, noticing others, noticing the group. And I think just taking that pause and saying like, you know, spending the time to kind of notice, I think has actually been really helpful. And just being intentional about noticing um, has been incredibly helpful. So that's been great. Yeah. Um, I use the breathing mindfully all the time for myself. Definitely even before I came on this webinar, I was feeling a little nervous. I'm like, yeah. breathe mindfully. And then definitely with the kids, you know, um, when we're doing the lung exam and especially during COVID, right? When people were worried about not being able to breathe and when we were doing a lot of telehealth, you know, we could practice during the lung exam, breathing mindfully. And I asked them like, how does that feel in your body? You know, for me, it feels a lot more calming. How does that feel for you? Um, so it was a way that I could do it for myself and share it at the same time. Modeling, perfect, yeah. Yep. yep. So <laughs> Great. Um, and then, you know, in terms of some of the connecting skills, you know, again, we, during the pandemic, we started having more daily huddles. Mm -hmm. Um, and so really practicing that kind of, you know, heartfelt listening with each other um, and choosing kindness with each other, you know, when we were all under a lot of stress, right? Again, just being intentional about those things and talking about those things with each other, with, e with each other, I think was super helpful. For sure. Yeah. I love the way you describe it because it's not, none of it, none of this is, the, you know, very little of it stuff I've never heard of. I, this is just, but I, it, it's help the practices help you become intentional. Yes. And, and, and when you're intentional about the practices, then you actually have the impact. Right. And that's what I, it sounds like that's what's working in your practice, that people are becoming much more intentional about doing it themselves. And okay. just having the framework helps people be intentional about things that they might have been wanting to do or kind of had a sense of, but now they have a framework to put it in an approach to help them be intentional about things that obviously sounds like it has improved a lot. Tell me um, how it feels in you. How does the, how do, what's the impact for you personally? Oh, I mean, definitely, you know, finding, I mean, you said finding more joy at work, yeah. right? Um, you know, that's been huge. Finding more peace at work has been huge. Um, and just really being able to kind of show up authentically. I mean, one of the other ones is speak authentically, um, you know, and that's been also, you know, super helpful. And so, you know, it's, and it's not like, again, a big change, right? It's just all those small changes along the way, you know, make each moment better and so when each moment is better then the day becomes better right great way to describe it each moment becomes better and the day becomes better and how do you think um, what do you see in your colleagues that, that's different again you know a lot of it's just noticing each other you know we definitely during the you know middle of the pandemic and you know our morale was low right um, it was so you know scary and hard to be healthcare providers um, and you know and then we had people coming in and out right in terms of whether they were sick or not and and and, and if they just needed a mental health day and so then everybody was just like grumpy and um, <laughs> and so again just having that time to really talk to each other as human beings and talk about all these skills um, you know helped us really kind of bond together more and also understand each other more. And then, you know, when we were, when there were differences, talk to each other about those differences and recognize that they're just differences, right? It doesn't mean good or bad about each other. If you don't need to judge each other for those things, um, just recognize them as, you know, we do things differently, right? We all, we all practice our resilient skills differently. Yeah, nice. Well, one thing we're aware of is that the whole approach together helps um, organizations like yours have more relational practices, right? It sounds like you're relating together better. And that gives us so much satisfaction because we're hardwired for connection. Yes. So exactly. when we have those relational practices, work doesn't just become a transaction, a to-do, a whack-a-mole thing, which sometimes work can just feel like whack-a-mole. Yep. <laughs> and unless we, and, when, and building in those relational practices, then we have a sense of ourselves, we have the sense of each other, and we the caring just blossoms in a way that makes everyone in a happier place. So, so happy to hear how that's working for you. I'm going to take a few minutes just to go a quick overview. I'm going to jump into the slides again. Um, so I can do a quick overview for those who haven't seen them. 
Um, so this is practical skills for managing stress, strengthening relationships, communicating more effectively, finding joy as Miriam talked about. And just so you know, our, our definition of resilience is the ability to adapt and respond to meet challenges effectively, super simple. But things that people don't always focus on is that our resilience will be higher or lower in different situations. You can be going along perfectly of this patient, things are you're feeling really good, and then you go into the next patient, and oh my goodness, your resilience just goes out the door. Something happens. It's really easy. And so the other part of that is our resilience can be strengthened through the practice of skills. And Miriam just did a description of how that's working in her practice. People are practicing the skills and their resilience are strengthening. How does this look as a whole? So we have our patterns, that's how we view the world. And we were talking about that, our protective patterns, that's how we react to the world when things are, we feel unsafe, things aren't going our way. And our skills, our centering, connecting and collaborating skills are how we create the world. And then we have a whole set of mindsets on the top. Curiosity, you know, what's happening as she was saying, not being judgmental as you were saying, and choice that we have, we can choose to be kindness. Um, and then courage. And we talk about courage as a way of leaning into our values. This is what we want. Sounds like the, you saw this, and you knew exactly what you wanted. And so you leaned into courage because it takes courage to bring something like this to your whole practice and help people go through that. So that's the, in, in an overview, just a reminder, we have these five different types of resilience, mostly so that we can talk about distinguish different parts of them. So we, again, are intentional as Miriam described. Um, and all of this together, as we're thinking about it, it helps us have better communication, more effective communication, better relationships. And Miriam, you described perfectly how we can live more authentically together. And then just a reminder, we, we talk about it, we practice it ourselves. This is not something that other people need to do. This is something that we need to do and that micro habits are key throughout it. We model therefore, and so other people can learn from us. And then we coach. So as you're talking about doing it with your, your patients, we coach. And then the last thing I wanna share in this part is just that, how do we heal? Just a reminder, right? Going into medicine, you, this is what we want in general. We want to heal, but how do we actually heal ourselves and others? Just a reminder that we are hardwired for connection. We're strengthened by being present to each other's stories with transparency and vulnerability. And that's whether it's a colleague, a patient, and that we normalize and humanize each other by being ourselves with each other, companions on the journey. And sometimes that can feel like a big shift. Certain pediatric practices, that is a big shift. But um, just a reminder that can make a huge difference. So I wanted to share all of that. Um, so let's talk maybe more specifically about um, how you're integrating into your practice. So you talked a little bit about the daily huddles. Do you want to talk a little bit more about how they work and what, what, what that happens? Yeah. So um, we have daily huddles. And again, it's our time to really, you know, connect and collaborate with each other. We started those during um, the pandemic because there was just so much going on and we needed more time to communicate and sit down with each other. Um, you know, right now, um, you know, since I became, you know, certified, I decided to kind of bring it more, again, more intentionally to our office. So we have something called Teaching Tuesdays. Um, and so right now we're going through, because, you know, in January, um, you know, I Again, we had a lot of staff yeah, out. Yeah. What <laughs> Things a went crazy, <laughs> right? Exactly. And so the other thing to remember, right, is that you know it's not a one and done thing, right? It's it's something we need to practice over and over again. Yeah. And so it, it felt like we needed to bring this back. Um, and so you know we're now doing a lot of the connecting skills. And so on the teaching Tuesdays, you know I've bring in, I've been bringing in the connecting skills. Um, you guys did made a did a great job of making these beautiful handouts. Um, so, you know, we bring in one at a time. So we talked about noticing others um, at our first one. And we talked about, um, you know, empathy and choosing kindness. And so um, we use that um, during those huddles. And again, it's, you know, I'm learning just as much from my staff as they are from me. Um, and it's, it's more time to just talk to each other about those things. Yeah, great way to describe it, yeah. And, and I love this, you mentioned something about the quote, how do you greet your family when you go home? You wanna talk us a little about what, what, where that came from? Oh yeah, so that, you know, that was one of the, our cultural, you know, looking, looking at cultural patterns, right? Um, and it was a great exercise um, because, you know, one thing that I learned from Christy um, was that, you know, it's also just the family stories we tell each other, right? It's, it, you know, a lot of times when we think about culture, 
culture, people think about it like our ethnicity, right? Or, you know, our home country, right? But it really is just how we grew up, yeah. you know? Um, and so one of the exercises that we did was, um, you know, when you get home from work, how do you greet your family and how do they greet you? Right. And it was, you know, super interesting to see that some people totally love and hug on each other, you know, and, you know, show lots of love, you know, and when I get home, I pretty much, I get home, my kids, everybody's like in their own space, you know, and we don't do that, like hugging and loving on each other um, when we get home and, you know, that's okay. And it's, again, it's just the culture that we grew up in. Um, and so it just gave us good understanding into like, you know, we're, we're all a little bit different that way. And same with, and then, you know, it helps us when our patients come in, right. You know, some of those patients want to be greeted with lots of love and some <laughs> like, you know, they just want a hello. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's great. I love the connection between how you're working with your colleagues and your patients. Cause that's what it is a whole ecosystem. Right? right. And that's what you're trying to change. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And how have you integrated we are resilient into your physical environment? Oh, so, um, you know, I think you've got a picture which we'll show, but we have um, slides, uh, uh, not slides, we have um, a, a display um, in our, off to our offices. And so the first two are from the American Academy of Pedi Pedi Pediatrics, kind of their a trauma informed um, thing. And it's, you know, regulate, um, oh, sorry, it's um, reassurance. So talk about the emotions that you're having. Right. Um, and then learn how to regulate, which is a lot of the we are resilient approach. Right. Um, and then and then, as you can see down there, we have those we are resilient um, handouts in a binder. And so uh, families can take a look at those as they're waiting. And then also when you know I'm talking about it, I can just pull it off the wall and say, hey, look at this. You know, what do you think about this? And it, it has it helps to have those visuals um, to share because sometimes it's easier to like look at it rather than, you know, hear it. I mean, everyone learns in different ways. Right. So absolutely. In fact, I don't have it here that I have a similar one. Um, we have the, we have a book Yep. Um, and the book. Oh yeah. This is exactly it. Actually the book allows people to share it with each other as well. There, there's a the copy. Exactly. Yeah. And they're laminated. So you can share them with patients and things. Yeah. Right. right. It's nice to have them all, all the rooms. Cause we all, all the doctors have the books. Um, yeah. You got to run back to the office, but here they're all right there. They're all in the rooms. Yeah, exactly. What a great way to, and, and, and we also, for those of you who don't know, we have a YouTube channel with a lot of the materials on videos so they can share and all the handouts have QR codes that take you to the website and they'll, you can learn more that way. So if the patients start getting interested, they can use the QR code to get to the website to learn more. So um, yeah, lots of ways for, for us to take it into the patients in a deeper, deeper level. Great. I'm glad you reminded me of that. I just did that yesterday with one of our my patients who, you know, is having um, some issues with depression. And I, you know, showed her this and I showed her the protective patterns. And I mean, she, she was feeling a lot of guilt around, you know, being angry, right? Um, and I said, you know, this is a normal protective pattern, right? Um, and just kind of normalize that for her. And then, you know, I did exactly that. You know, here's a QR code. <laughs> Take it home. Look at, look at it more. Great. Excellent. Great, excellent. So anything else that you wanna um, show, you know, I, we'll talk about resources for people and then at Q and A, but anything else that you feel like people should know about? Oh, uh, you know, I think this approach is, you know, beautiful and amazing. And like I said, it, it's such a nice way to kind of learn from each other um, in, a, in a more structured way. I mean, I thought for, for me, you know, I actually certified to become a life coach um, over, the, over the pandemic as well. Um, and this was just one added thing. It, you know, when I, when I do a life coaching, it's a lot of thought work, um, but sometimes it's really helpful to have more things that you can actually do, like breathing, you know, showing gratitude, appreciating others. Um, and so it, it's great to have that as an adjunct to what I already do. Great. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Specific skills. I mean, that's part of the whole approach is to try to make it as practical as possible, basing it on the research, right? Yeah, so that people can do it. People can do it. So just so people can know, we have two training options coming up. We have a personal professional resilience circle. We have resilient parenting workshops. And I know that AAP of Northern California is also offering resilience circles through there. So please, you know, you can let me know or let Miriam or um, sign up through AAP. California chapter one. 
Um, also our website, as I said, lots of free digital resources. We have the handouts Miriam was talking about and the book you can download for free or you can purchase the, if you'd like it in the book form, which it is easier to use certainly in the book form, posters and stuff, and then lots of other things for training. So just wanted to be aware of that. Um, and just, um, is there any questions in the audience? Would love to answer anything people have. So you can put them in the chat, raise your hand. Just wanted to know, okay. We will be making the recording available. It'll be with all of our other recordings on um, our YouTube channel and also I'll send it out to all of you. Yes, question about the circles. So um, resilience circles, uh, Miriam was talking about that, is such a great way to um, really get the material because it allows you the time to process over time. You get you know, a bit of it every week and you can process the information with each other. Um, the, we offer what the general one is personal and professional. So people come in from all walks of life. And as I said, so everyone is welcome. Um, and uh, they're generally a lot of times at, right now we're offering them for, for free because we just felt people needed them so much during the pandemic. So, um, we encourage a lot of people to sign up for those. We also have special ones for pediatricians. As I said, they're being offered as a benefit through the AAP chapter one. And um, you can email me at mary at dovetail learning or info at dovetail learning if it's easier.org to um, learn more about those. If you have not seen the AAP chapter one, they send it out in their newsletter, I know that. Um, anything else that you have to say about circles, Miriam? Um, definitely, you know, great way to kind of, you know, wrestle with some of the material. Um, it really is just one hour a week. So it's, it's not that much time. I mean, we did, you know, sometimes get things to think about or um, process throughout the week. And, you know, I did it when I, you know, could, and, you know, if I didn't, it was fine. I would still show up for the one hour and got so much out of that. Um, and so, you know, they're really, they're fantastic. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. And like I said, they are available for everybody. And it's sometimes people want to just be with pediatricians because that's also nice just to have a process to really with your peers. So um, the resources are available to anyone. Um, the free resources and you can join a, a personal professional circle for sure. It's just the um, pediatrician only um, one is a benefit of um, California chapter one. We'd love to bring it to other AAPs. So take it to your AAP, your local chapter, and I'd love to bring it to other ones. We have done presentations throughout California. We were an ACEs aware grantee. I didn't say that in the beginning. So we did trauma informed to a lot of different practices all over California. Um, but this continuing effort to, um, there was a thought that we really need circles now, <laughs> resilient circles now, because people, it's just been such a hard two years. So um, the AAP said, okay, we're gonna continue that work and offer those. Um, the one in Northern California chapter decided that and we're also taught in discussion with ones in San Diego and Orange County. And so it might happen there as well, um, but I'd love to do it at other places. Um, and then when, Wendy and I are great friends. So she's also <laughs> a pediatrician and coach. And so Wendy, just feel free to contact me at any point. I love you too. Um, and you know, I can tell you more about how to bring this um, to your chapter. Yes, I'll research, certainly reshare the resource page on the screen. So that means share screen. What's this? Great. Yeah, so that's info at Dovetail Learning or Mary at Dovetail Learning. And our you know, website is dovetaillearning.org. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, let me see. Yeah, that would be great. Um, okay. I think we've answered all the questions. Um, we really wanna thank you guys for joining us. Um, it's just really fun to talk about this work. And um, Miriam, thank you so much for joining us because um, it's always a delight. And yeah, always a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> well, I, I love this whole approach and program and you know, highly recommend it for anyone. Yeah, great. Okay, take care, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.